In this video, which I hope to make brief, I'll be talking about the Book of Common Prayer, the 1559 edition of the Elizabethan Prayer Book. It's edited by John E. Booty, printed by the University of Virginia Press. And there is the ISBN. Hopefully you should be able to see that. This is the back of the dust jacket. It is a little over nine inches, nine and a quarter inches tall, about six and a quarter inches wide, and one and three eighths inches thick compared to the Univer Cambridge University large print 1662 prayer book. It is much larger. This is essentially a normal sized hardback book. I'm going to take the dust jacket off to show you the cover. It is gray cloth over board. There's the spine. And the back is clean. Yellow head and tail bands. And you can definitely see signatures. You can also see stitching in the spine, so it is a sewn hardback. And we'll look at the inside. So it's the Book of Common Prayer 1559. Nicely done with red print on the title page. It's the copyright page, University of Virginia Press, 2005. And contents. There's a foreword, an editor's preface, the Book of Common Prayer, and then there's a nice essay on the history of the 1559 book, prayer book. Contents of the prayer book. So it begins with the Act of Uniformity, the preface, all the ceremonies, the order how the Psalter is appointed to be read, etc. So the Act of Uniformity. You can see it's in a modern typeface. This uh, doesn't use the long S, for instance, and the U's look like U's and not V's and vice versa. So it's modern print. To keep this video short, I'm just going to flip through the communion service so that you can see that. If you have your 1662 book handy, you can check for differences. I'm not going to give any commentary on it. Just turn the pages. I will note that there are footnotes on various pages giving you textual commentary, occasionally definitions of terms that may be obscure, like letteth is hindered, health is salvation, comfort is strengthening, Meat is proper and suitable, or the proper prefaces, the words of institution, the words said at distribution, and the Gloria at the end, and the priest's blessing. So now we're looking at the essay, The History of the 1559 Book, and it explains why it was chosen. And um, it settled down, they say, to that via media, which has become characteristic of Anglicanism. This book then is more clearly representative, representative of Anglicanism than either of the earlier books, the 1549 or the 1552 book. It's also important um, because of its use in the Elizabethan age. This, I think, was very close to the book that would have been used in Jamestown in 1609. In, in the fact, if memory serves, I actually bought my copy at a bookstore in Jamestown, Virginia. I wanted to show you this paragraph in the essay as well, which discusses the reason that the reformers were so focused on the worship of the early church as a model for reform. The essay then goes on to discuss the prayer book from a number of different perspectives. Uh, the one I'm looking at now is uh, 
a section called the prayer book and the idea of communion and it discusses the idea of sacrifice for Cranmer sacrifice was threefold Christ's sacrifice once for all on the cross the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving performed as the faithful remember the cross and the offering of the worshipers their souls and bodies the people's oblation the center of attention is focused not on what the priest does but upon Christ's sacrifice, which inspires the sacrificial service of the faithful. After the essay is a section of notes tied to the different pages. So these are the notes to pages 8 through 14, 14 through 15, and so forth. Let's go on for several pages. The font in the prayer book proper is about 11 point font in the notes at the bottom of the pages, and I believe here as well is closer to nine points. There's a bibliography and the biblical index. So just to summarize, it's a normal size hardback, a heavy paper, no show through whatsoever, nice large 11 point print, uh, sewn binding, good construction, and it gives you insight into the 1559 mode of worship in Anglicanism. Um, since the 1559 books and the 1552 book and the 1604 book are so similar, it really does give you quite a lot of insight into early Anglicanism. It gives you more of a reformed tone than you would find in more modern prayer books. I began my participation in Anglicanism with Anglo-Catholicism, and over time as I've studied the early church, um, patristic writings, church history, I've drifted more and more towards the reformed wing of the church myself. Well, thanks very much for watching, and remember to uh, like the video if you do like it, and to subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Thanks very much.